So, quarterfinals is a wrap. Uh, the leaderboard was um, looking very good. I managed to stay in the at the top, both worldwide and in the European rankings, which means I get to start in the top heat in the upcoming semifinals. The semifinals is the first live competition of the season. So so far we've been competing online, and now we actually get to jump on a real stadium. It's actually the last stage before the CrossFit Games. From our region, the top 10 out of 40 athletes will qualify for the Games. It's one of the toughest and most competitive regions, so to qualify for the top 10 is going to be hard, but I'm up for the challenge. I've obviously followed his career for years, and I've seen him in competitions. I've seen, you know, the previous injuries he's had as well, as well as his performances in competitions. First time we did anything together was actually 2014. I was working with Lukas Hoberi and uh, we went for a training camp in Pori in Finland when Janne was still training with uh, Mikko Salo. You know, th then we stayed in touch. You know, I borrowed him my Aeropress. He never returned it. And then a few years back, uh, 2022, after games, kind of at the Rogue Invitational, we started to have the conversation about working together. He's been working by himself for a long time and he was looking to get some guidance get some coaching and just get someone else to take over the main responsibility for programming. So that's when we really um, started working together. We're doing some physiological testing every season, looking at his lactate, VO2 max, things like that. And then of course, every training session is a performance metric itself that we track to have embedded testing in his training. Typically train five days a week and then have that one active, active day and then one complete rest day. Try to take all of this and put it together in a way that we focus especially on the things that he needs to be ready for. So either things we don't do for the rest of the season because they're very taxing for the body or things that we identified the quarterfinals or in the training leading up to it that might show up that he needs to get better at. Event one was five rounds of 800 meter run and 10 clean and jerks. We had tested this workout actually twice in, in practice so I knew exactly what pace to hold. The goal was to start at around 350 to 4 minutes per 800, which had worked well in, in practice. So that's what I started with, but already after first round of run and clean and jerks, I started to slow down quite a lot and was much more gassed out than uh, what I expected to be. We were still fighting and trying to keep up with the pack, but three rounds in, my legs were, were just empty. and like way, way too gassed out and the last two rounds became a survival fight. I was just trying to finish and get to the finish line as fast as possible. Finishing over three minutes slower than what the goal was was disappointing start for the competition. Event two, this was my favorite workout of all six workouts. The really classic CrossFit five round triplet, 100 double unders, 20 toaster bar and 10 front squats. I had done very well in practice, so I was confident to maybe get a event win or at least a top three placement. I was on first heat, so I was trying to just run my own race and not focus on, on anyone else. And it worked well for three rounds. Then the last two rounds, I just gassed out too much and I had to start breaking the, the double unders and uh, the toaster bars way too much. I ended up finishing the workout like 12th or 13th spot so got some good points to pump me up on the on the overall leaderboard event three was a triplet with echo bike rope climbs and box jump overs i knew this workout was a lot on the echo bike and it would be hard to compete against the bigger and stronger guys so the plan was to push the box jump overs and the legless rope climbs as fast as i can and then I just try to hold on a steady pace on the echo. Since the first two workouts had gone not the way I had hoped, we modified the strategy a little bit and the goal was to start a little bit slower than in practice and then try to speed up towards the end. Already three, four rounds in, my pace started to slow down quite a lot and ended up finishing 26th spot which again didn't really give me any points to close that gap to top 10. 
So another uh, disappointing finish, but we still have three more workouts to go for the last day. So final day, we had three workouts, 300 points for grubs, so anything can happen. First workout was a couplet of rowing and handstand walks. I was very confident about my handstand walks, but I knew this workout also had a lot of rowing in it. I was so far from top 10 that I knew I would need to take some risks on the next workouts to close down the gap. So we decided to push the roll a little bit harder than what we did in practice. I was holding around my 2K pace for the first 400 meters and the 600 meters, but then the last 800 meters just slowed down way too much. On average, I was probably holding slower than my 5K pace. And this was the most important row of all three rounds, so that cost me quite a lot of time. Still managed to get my first top 10 placement, finished on eighth place, got some good points and managed to close down the cap a little bit. Event five was the snatch ladder. On paper, it's not my wheelhouse thing, but I had done great in practice, felt good about the workout. I actually had done this in the past, in 2016, with a similar setup. So I was excited to uh, try and beat my time from, from then. The point standing, I knew I would need to risk a lot in this one to fight for the top 10 finish. Started fast and tried to hold on a much faster pace than I wanted to. Ended up failing one lift on the last bar, but still got a decent finish. 15th or 16th place didn't unfortunately give me enough points to really put me on a, on a good place before the final event. The points weren't looking very good for me. Uh, I knew it's probably going to need a miracle to get to top 10. But I tried not to think about that too much. I wanted to give it my all and have a good performance for the final, no matter what the final placement would be. So I started the echo bike a little bit faster than, than in practice and uh, hold on to unbroken ring muscle ups. After watching the women's heats, I knew this workout would come down on the on the lunges. Uh, you can either win or, or lose it there. I uh, decided to risk it. plan was to go on and pick up the dumbbells as fast as, as I can, no matter how much I was hurting from the muscle ups and the echo bike. And I took maybe a five second breather before I started. And then I remember maybe 10, 10 meters or 10 steps before the finish line, the crowd was just roaring super loud, probably for uh, Victor's and Moritz's close battle. And that gave me a pretty good boost and decided to try to try and go unbroken in the lunges. And it worked. It was a very positive performance, actually the first time that I felt like, like myself. Got a top four, I think fourth place on um, this workout, which also marked the best finish of the whole competition. Obviously disappointed overall, but happy to finish on a high note and get at least one like very good performance for, for the weekend. Uh, I mean, he's been a mainstay of CrossFit Games now for uh, so long. It's like, it's funny, you have these names that you just expect to be there despite how hard it is to get back to the games year after year after year, and Ion is one of those. The competition was one of the best, or was the best uh, semi-finals that I've competed at. So big thank you to, to French Throwdown and um, you know, the CrossFit staff for, for putting this together. It was awesome to, uh, to take part. The crowd was also amazing. Whole weekend, thank you for, for the cheers. Definitely helped pick myself up with all the cheers. And congrats for, for all the athletes. Uh, as I already said, the, the level in, in Europe was just insanely high this year. So I'm extremely pumped to watch everyone crush the, the games in Texas later this year. We started this series uh, chasing the podium. Uh, originally, the idea was to celebrate my 10th year at the CrossFit Games but obviously that didn't happen this year so on a positive side like for everyone who's enjoyed watching and who has watched this series like it just means that it gets to continue for for another year so we'll be you know we'll be continuing this chase and for the podium for for another year in 
2025 and I'm uh, excited for that. Maybe time to start a new series. <laughs> <laughs>